Have you ever wondered why the Bible states that Christ could only be a priest in the order of Melchizedek? I'll explain why. Melchizedek was a Canaanite priest king who worshipped El El Yon, not Yahweh. Melchizedek is briefly mentioned in the Old Testament, and if he wasn't mentioned in the New Testament in connection to Jesus, he would be a lot less relevant. Melchizedek was a Canaanite king priest. Melchizedek was from Salem, which at the time would have been a Canaanite city-state, untouched by the Shasu as this was pre-conquest. The Hebrew patriarch Abraham, while on his journey in Canaan, encountered Melchizedek before the birth of Moses and the Israelite Shasu invasion of the land. Melchizedek, priest of El, the Canaanite high god, worshipped the Canaanite pantheon of deities. He assumed the role of the greater man when he blessed Abraham, whose god was Yahweh. In the New Testament, Melchizedek is mentioned several times in relation to Jesus. We need a chief priest who is holy, innocent, pure, set apart from sinners, and who has the highest position in heaven. Furthermore, the New Testament says that Christ could only be from the order of Melchizedek, Canaanite, not the Levitical, Jewish, priesthood. There's also this bit. This confidence goes into the holy place behind the curtain where Yeshua went before us on our behalf. He has become the chief priest forever in the way Melchizedek was a priest. Jesus became a priest as Melchizedek was, and you'd think the gods a chief priest worships is or are pretty significant to his identity. So the fact that Melchizedek worshipped El El Yon confirms the nature of the true God of Christ. The Bible also states that the Savior could not come from the Levitical priesthood. If the work of the Levitical priests had been perfect, we wouldn't need to speak about another kind of priest. However, we speak about another kind of priest, a priest like Melchizedek, not a Levitical priest like Aaron. Next, we see that the tribe of Levi was awarded the priesthood in a sort of prestige amongst the 12 tribes of Israel because they slaughtered their allies for worshiping Canaanite deities. That was a dividing point amongst the people a massive crossroads. Here is Moses instructing the Levites to carry out murder. This is what Yahweh Elohim of Israel says, Each of you put on your sword, go back and forth from one end of the camp to the other, and kill your relatives, friends, and neighbors. And Moses said, Today you are ordained as Yahweh's priests. God gave you a blessing today, because each of you fought with your own sons and brothers. Before the invasion of Canaan, Moses drew a line in the sand and rewarded the priesthood to those who killed the others who were worshipping Canaanite gods. He gave the priesthood to the Levites. This Levitical prestige would carry it on into the monarchy period, shortly after the conquest of Canaan was completed. The significance of the Bible saying Jesus could not come from the Levitical priesthood, describing him as a distinctly different type of priest, and then directly saying he would come from the Melchizedek priesthood is immense. The Levitical priesthood represents the Shasu god Yahweh, and the Melchizedek priesthood represents the higher, indigenous Canaanite deity El. The Levites were rewarded their priesthood by Moses for killing those who worshipped El the God Christ called out to from his cross. An interesting excerpt details dialogue before the crucifixion. The Roman governor of Judea, Pontius Pilate, had questioned Jesus and was practically looking for a reason to release him. Pilate says, Are you the king of the Jews? Yeshua replied, Did you think of that yourself, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own people and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Yeshua answered, My kingdom doesn't belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. My kingdom doesn't have its origin on earth. Here Christ answered the question indirectly by distinguishing his servants, those under his jurisdiction, as separate from the Jews. The Jews are identified as a separate group that is condemning him, 
Also, Yahweh, like Satan, is biblically considered to be the god of this world, and despite the overarching Roman rule, the Jews still held immense influence over the affairs in Judea. Enough to get Jesus crucified. The kingdom Jesus spoke of is what he would have considered Ael's domain, the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus was condemned, the crowd gleefully took responsibility for the act by saying, His blood is on us and our children while Pilate, the Roman authority, had been sickened by it and washed his hands to separate himself from bearing the guilt. This guilt was wholeheartedly embraced by those who worshipped Yahweh. If you were ever perplexed by why the crowd would want Jesus to die by crucifixion, and why those in Judea were eager for his death, as many of the original passages in the New Testament claim Jesus was well received by those he spoke to, it's because very little of his preaching was done in Jerusalem, where he was condemned. He mainly preached in Galilee and Saint Maria. These were places full of people who were culturally different and far more receptive to his teachings than those in southern Judea. It was a world of difference. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to learn more, I invite you to check out my other videos and the pin link to my free book.